Hey guys, and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll take a look at the Python library, autopy2xz. Now, this library is a special library in Python that's used to convert .py Python files into .exe files. Now, why do we do this though? Well, when you want to distribute your Python application, your Python program to your end users, you need to make sure that it runs on their computers, right? But with a .py file, there might be some problems. Like if you're sending it to another person who has the exact same configuration as you, then it'll run no, you know, with no problems. But because systems can vary so much, because they can have different installations, because they might be missing some dependencies, there can be a lot of possible problems, okay? And that's why we generate exe files, okay? And we do this so that any libraries, any external dependencies that you may have used are all included within that exe. A good example is a library that you may install using pip, okay? It's not included in the Python standard library. It's something that you externally downloaded, okay? And you want that to basically be present on your client's computer, but it's not going to be if you just give them the .py file because the library is installed somewhere on your computer. It's not on your user's computer, okay? So you need to generate an exe that automatically you know, includes all of this stuff. And a library like autopy2exe is exactly what does it for you, okay? Because Python, unlike C or C++, does not generate an exe. It's executed using an interpreter, not a compiler. So we'll need to do it ourselves using a library like autopy2exe. Also, there are several other Python libraries other than autopy2exe. But autopy2exe, the reason why it's so popular is because it actually provides you with an entire interface, a GUI interface, okay? More on this later, so. So why have I picked this program in specific? It's not very complicated. It's just hardly 10 lines of code, and that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple line of code, and it's just using the takeinter library which is a GUI library in Python, and it just displays an image. Now, there's a very specific reason why I'm using this program, okay? And I'll talk more about that as we proceed. So let's go ahead and continue on with the tutorial. Okay, so how do we set up autopy2exe? Well, there are two ways we can do this. The first way is using pip, auto pip install autopy2exe. Okay, this is the first way. Now I already have pip installed, so I don't need to do this, but chances are that this may not work out for you, okay? Because to actually activate autopy2exe's interface, you need to run this command, autopy2exe, okay? And I know that some people will have problems with this because this command, because it's a bit complicated. Well, not complicated really, but sometimes people have issues because for this command to actually execute, you need to navigate over to the folder where your Python installation is, okay? And then you need to run this code. You need to run this command, okay? Alternatively, you need to have Python installed to path or your environment variable, okay? That's, that'll also enable this command to simply run no matter where it is. Uh, ignore that. Basically, this command right here will run underneath two conditions. Either you navigate over to the folder where your Python installation is, or you have Python included in path, okay? But I know that some people have issues with this, so there's actually another way, an alternative way that I'll actually tell you about as well, just in case, because this method isn't actually that hard, and chances are when you were installing Python, you ticked that little option that says include to path, and this will, command will work for you, no problems. Okay, but let me just discuss the other technique anyway. If you navigate over to the GitHub, okay, uh, GitHub repo for autopy2exe, you can actually download it from there. Here we go, you click on this link over here. Okay, and it'll take us to the page for autopy2exe. Once you're here, navigate over to this code button and click on it and you'll see this download zip option and you just need to you know, download it from here. I'll include the link for all of this, so don't worry about it, okay? Now here's the folder over here, the .zip file. All right, so now extract this folder and here's our folder, extracted folder. 
And here you can see the .py file and the image that we're using in VS Code. So open this up. And this run.py file, you need to execute this. Okay, just double click and it'll run. It's a bit finicky though. Sometimes, okay, good. Sometimes it just opens up the browser and doesn't do anything. I'm not sure why, but this time it worked correctly. Anyways, so here's our autopy 2 xe GUI. As you can see, it's a pretty nice GUI interface that we can use, and there are a bunch of options in here that I'll tell you about soon. But uh, there's one slight thing you should know. autopy 2 xe actually uses another library behind the scenes that's called PyInstaller. PyInstaller is actually the main thing over here. autopy 2 xe is mainly just providing us the interface. The actual work is being done by PyInstaller, and you can actually use PyInstaller by itself. We don't need to use autopy 2 xe but autopy 2 xe gives us this nice interface. That's why we're using it. Okay, and there is generally a trend observed that autopy 2 xe does seem to work a little more often than PyInstaller because there are a whole bunch of errors that can occur that I'll get more into in a minute. But with autopy 2 xe we've observed you know, a fewer degree of errors. Anyway, so let's see how we can get this running. The first thing we'll do is in the script location, go browse, and this is our file. We'll select it, okay? And you can actually see the uh, this changing over here. This is the actual command. If you like copy paste this command and run it, run it in your terminal, it'll produce the exact same effect, okay? So over here, we have the option of one file. One file gives us two possible options one directory or one file. One directory makes one you know, folder, one directory, and then makes a bunch of files in there. This is like the default mode. There, there'll be an exe file in there. There'll be all the other libraries, all the DLLs and all kinds of stuff like that. That's what one directory does. One file, what it does is somehow combines all those DLLs into one big exe file. So for example, with one directory, you end up with uh, a 3 MB exe file and a bunch of smaller files with you know that are about one 2 MB big. With one file, however, you end up with something that's like 60, 70 GB, but it's, it's just one file. So you may want to, you know, whichever you prefer, use that one. There is a trend we've observed though that one file sometimes works when one directory doesn't. And sometimes one directory will work when one file doesn't. So it's kind of weird, but whichever works, use that one. Or, you know, if both work, then use whichever you prefer. Anyways, this console window, this option, what it does is tells your exe file, it tells PyInstaller whether to generate a console-based program or a window-based. Uh, basically, when you're regularly executing scripts, you execute them in the console, right? Like you're printing something, you print it to the console. But sometimes when you're using stuff like takeinter or like Pygame, which is a game library, then you already have a GUI present. And that's where you want to pick the window-based option. And which is also uh, in line with our current program that I'm trying to convert to an exe, because it's basically using takeinter, which is a GUI library, which provides its own interface. Okay, if you pick this option, window-based, what it'll do is hide the console. Otherwise, if you pick this, it'll work but it'll give us both the console and the window, which is gonna look a bit odd. So, you know, pick window-based if you're using takeinter or something similar. Icon is a bit irrelevant. It just changes, you know, the icon that appears on the file. Uh, but, you know, if you want to change that, go ahead. Additional files, this is important. And this is also why I'm using, uh, using a program that has an image inside of it, because I want to show the use of this option. Okay, now one slight problem that people do is that if you notice over here, I've made this, uh, you know, I haven't specified the full path over here. I haven't specified the full path for this image. And this is actually very important when you are, you know, creating EXEs like this, because let's say that I did something like this. Users, and then my name, okay, name, and then desktop, okay. The problem is, if I give this to some other user, to some other person who has a different computer. And even if I give him the image, even if I bundle the image inside, you know, inside uh, his, 
inside the file that I give him. Maybe I zip it all up. Maybe I zip up the py file or the exe file in the image, then I give it to him. But the problem is he'll never have this path because typically you have a unique name, right? This might be something like John and the person you're giving it to, is, his, name is, his name is something else like Bob. And the problem is that he can never run this program now because he, he can never have this directory. And it's gonna be kind of stupid if he has to go and create that directory, right? And he won't even know what directory it is because it'll just throw an error and he won't know, know what the hell's going on. So you need to do, do something about this. And actually the solution to this is do not hard code your paths. Okay, leave them relative like this. Okay, if you just have it in the same directory, leave it like this. Okay, otherwise if you have a folder inside your directory where you have the Python file, then do it like this. Okay, maybe if you have like 20, 30 images. So what you'll do is typically, you know, let me just show you. I'll go over here and over here. What I would do is create a folder called images and then I would basically put this image inside of it. Okay, that's what I would normally do. So this is just something to keep in mind because a lot of people make mistakes here and again, this is something I need to, you know, I feel the need to clarify. Okay, so that's additional files. Let me just add the file. There we go. Okay, and this is basically, uh, this basically controls where the image ends up. Okay, because if you want it to appear in a file like images, then you can do this. Okay, if you just want it to appear in the same directory as the .exe, when it gets generated, you just leave a dot in there. Okay, more on this later. Okay, I'll show you where the image shows up when we, when we you know, compile all of this. In the advanced store here, just don't mess around with this unless you know what you're doing, okay? It's just, you don't need to know this and chances are you'll never, you'll, you'll never need to use it. Anyways, so settings over here, settings, this is your output directory. And what else? Increase recursion limit, that may, may be something you need if you're running into errors due to a uh, very high amount of recursion or something. And what else is there? Nothing important. Okay, so that's all of our options. That's pretty much everything you need to know. Let's run this code and hopefully this should work. Let me just review everything where that's the script location, one file. Uh, should I leave it as one file? Let's just do a directory, okay? Or you know what, let's just, let's just leave it as one file. It looks a bit better. It's just one file instead of like 20 or 30. Convert. Now this is gonna take a while, okay? And there's gonna be a few errors that pop up while this is running, you'll see a few error codes here. You'll see a bunch of warnings. No need to worry about that. That's all perfectly normal most of the time. Uh, so don't worry too much, okay? Hopefully everything will be a-okay. And this is gonna take a while. So I'll just resume the video, resume the recording once it's done. So here's our Python exe file that has been compiled due to autopy exe. Now, if we double click this, it'll execute and our take into a window with the image should show up. But as you can see where we've double clicked it, it's executed, but there's this error over here. Why is this error here? Well, the reason for this is actually because there's a slight problem. There's a slight bug with PyInstaller, which AutoPy exe uses. This bug occurs when you're trying to add additional files like images or sound files with the one file option. If we had done this using one directory, it would have worked. But with one file, there's a slight bug. But don't worry, I'll teach you how to fix this. It's a very easy fix. There's this little code snippet that you need. Okay, so let's navigate back to our uh, script file. To fix this problem, you need to use this little function over here. Okay, if you want to use something, if you want to use an additional file, like an image or anything, anything really, like a music file, a uh, video file, whatever you want to use inside your Python script, you need to use this function to load it up. So instead of this, what we'll do is re resource path function like this. Okay, just copy paste this function as is. Don't worry about what's going on inside of it. Just you know follow this format, okay? This will produce a relative path, okay? You can use this path to basically, you know, find that file. PyInstaller will work with this, okay? There's a slight problem that causes PyInstaller to fail to generate this relative path, 
and that's why we run into an error. Okay, this will make it work. So if I, you know, go back, I'll I'll just run that command again. Auto pi to exe, and this will generate the GUI again. All right here we go. So let's just you know reset all of that. Uh, browse, come on. Select the file, one file, window based, advanced files. Let's select the cat image, and all right. There's one last thing. Uh, okay, good. I, I already fixed that because previously I had I had accidentally written images there. Never mind. Uh, back over here. And is there anything else we're forgetting? No. Good. So let's convert it. And that's because I already generated the output previously, but we want to override it because the previous one was kind of useless. So okay. And as usual, I'll resume the video once this has finished converting. Here we have our Python exe file now. And if I run this, it'll give us the take into window with the correct image. There we go. Here's our take into window. The image is displaying correctly. So now we know that we're displaying a window properly. And we also have the image, the relative path working. Now this is basically the end of the video. There's just one last thing I want to discuss because I know that some people will still face an error, okay? And that's actually where this, I included these two comments. There's a reason for that. So if you're getting some errors when you run the Python exe, that's not related to the image path or anything. And it's giving you some kind of weird error, like cannot run script, cannot execute script. Then what you need to do is actually run these two commands in your terminal. And this is actually what I had to do as well because I was facing some errors. The thing is that the Py installer version that gets installed when you use pip, when you use uh, pip install Py installer, okay, this will actually kind of give you the wrong version or give you a version of Py installer that has some problems. You need to actually get this version that actually is like the developer version for Py installer that'll actually work properly. And you might wonder like, hey, I never installed Py installer. Why do I need to uninstall it first? Well, the thing is, when you download, uh, when you install AutoPy 2xz, it, I believe it also brings in Py Installer. Because remember what I said earlier that AutoPy 2xz just gives you the GUI. The actual backend work is all being done by Py Installer. So yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. We've discussed quite a bit. This has gone on quite long already. I'll make some separate videos where I'll you know f sort of follow up on this. And we'll discuss some other things regarding Py Installer, how to reduce the size of the exe generated by Py Installer. And I'll also compile all of these fixes, all, all of the fixes we discussed in this tutorial, and maybe a few more if I can find some common issues. Then we'll just, you know, compress all of those and discuss them in one video, which we'll call something like, you know, fixing problems with Py Installer. So do subscribe to the channel so that you stay notified for all future videos. And don't worry, I'll also leave links in the description below. So if you come back to this or you're watching this uh, a lot later, then chances are all those links will already be down there in the description, okay? So with that, let's end the video. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.